Two years ago, I was trying to figure out my eligibility for general skill visas, trying to understand how many points will I get? Are you in the same boat right now? Then this video is for you. There are several different point-based visas in Australia. Today, we are focusing on the general skilled migration visas. There are three primary visas in this system, subclass 189, 190 and 491. And the points-based test is compulsory for these visas. To apply for a general skilled migration visa, you must meet several key requirements. Firstly, you must be under 45 years old when you apply. You must have competent English, which is 6 in IELTS and 50 in the PTE exam. Your occupation must be on the relevant skills occupation list, such as medium and long-term strategic list. You need a positive skills assessment for your nominated occupation from the relevant assessing authority. For example, Engineers Australia assesses engineering occupations. You must score at least 65 points on the points test, but there are more factors such as age, studying or having a certain amount of experience. For state nominated visa 190 and 491, you can get additional points from the state towards your application. To check the data on previous invitation rounds for your specific occupation, you can refer to my video on how to check previous skill set invitation rounds for Australia. This will give you valuable insight into the points required and the number of invitations issued for your occupation. I'll drop the link in the description box below for your reference. So how do you accumulate these points? There are 11 factors through which you can gather these points. Number 1. State nomination. Number 2. Age. Number 3. English requirement. Number 4. Skill employment experience. Number 5. Educational qualification. Number 6. Australian study requirement. Number 7. Specialist education qualification. Number 8. Study in regional Australia. Number 9. Credential community language. Number 10. Partner skills. And number 11. Professional year in Australia. Now let's break down all these factors. Number 1. State or Territory Nomination Subclass 189 is a permanent visa that does not require any sponsorship. You will not receive any points for it. Subclass 190 is also a permanent visa but requires nomination by an Australian state or territory. This adds an extra 5 points to your score. Subclass 491 is a provisional visa granted for 5 years. It leads to permanent residency after meeting specific conditions. This visa requires either state nomination or sponsorship by an eligible family member living in regional Australia, adding 15 points to your score. Factor 2 is age. Points are awarded based on your age at the time of invitation. If you are 18 to 24 years old, you get 25 points. If you are 25 to 32 years at the time of invitation, you get 30 points. If you are 33 to 39 years old, you will receive 25 points. You get only 15 points if you are within 40 to 44 years age bracket. If you are older than 45, you are not eligible to apply. Next factor is English requirement. You are required to meet a minimum level of competence for English to be eligible to apply. Competent English is IELTS 6 or an equivalent in PTE, which is 50. There are no points given for competent English. There are two higher levels of English which will give you points. Proficient English. If you are able to score 7 each in IELTS or 65 each in PTE, you can earn 10 points. Superior English. If you can get 8 bands in IELTS and 70 in PTE in each of the modules, you can get 20 points. There are 5 accepted English tests. Next factor is work experience overseas and in Australia. For the employment to be counted, you must be employed for at least 20 hours per week and it must be paid work experience. You can claim points for only closely related occupations in the same ENSO unit group. The employment must be after the qualification to be counted for points. The maximum points that you can get for both onshore and offshore combined work experience are 20 points. For overseas work experience, you can start earning a minimum of 5 points with more than 3 years of experience in the last 10 years. 
the maximum points that you can get for overseas employment are 15 points if you have 8 or more years of experience. If you have experience of working in Australia, you can start getting points with just one year of working. Next factor is educational qualifications. You can earn points for your qualification either completed in Australia or in any recognized institution overseas. For diploma or trade level qualification from an Australian institution, you can get 10 points. A bachelor's or master's degree can get you 15 points. A PhD or doctorate degree can give you 20 points. If you have an engineering degree from an overseas institution, you will need to get it assessed by an assessing authority like Engineers Australia to claim your points. You can get 10 points with positive skills assessment. Next factor is Australian study requirement. Completing at least two years of full-time study in Australia can earn you five points. This is applicable if you have an Australian degree, diploma, advanced diploma or trade qualification. Next factor is specialist education qualification. Additional 10 points will be given if you have completed master's degree by research or a doctorate from Australian education institution in a STEM major. STEM includes science, technology, engineering, mathematics or ICT. Next factor is study in regional Australia. Studying in regional Australia for two years full time can get you five additional points. Regional Australia is anywhere in Australia outside of Sydney, Melbourne and Brisbane. Next factor is accredited community language. This can add another five points if you can get NATI approved accredited qualification, which means if you can pass a translation test from your first language to English language, you can then claim 5 points towards your EOI. Next factor is partner skill. If you are single, you can get 10 points. The same points will be given to you if you have an Australian citizen or permanent resident partner. It's more difficult to get partner points. If your partner has a competent English and a positive skills assessment on the same list as you, you can get 10 points. If your partner has only competent English but no relevant skills assessment, you can get 5 points. In any other circumstances, you will not be given any partner points for the skill migration program. The last factor is professional year in Australia. Completing a professional year in Australia in your nominated occupation can give you 5 points. To be eligible for the award of these points, your professional year must be in your nominated occupation or a closely related occupation. It must have been completed in Australia over a period of 12 months and within 48 months period prior to the time of invitation. Professional year program includes the courses in accounting, IT and engineering. Now let's dive into a case study on how points are calculated for these general skilled migration visas in Australia. Meet Simran. Simran is a software engineer from India. She is 30 years old, has a master's degree in IT and has been working in her field for the past 5 years. Simran took the IELTS test and scored 7 each. She did her skills assessment through ACS and got a positive result. She has not studied in Australia and has not completed any credential language test. She has a partner who has proficient English and a positive skills assessment in software testing. So how many points does Simran have if she is submitting an expression of interest for subclass 189, 190 and 491? Let's break down her points. Simran is 30 years old. In the points system, this earns her 30 points for being in the 25 to 32 age bracket. Simran has scored 7 in each component of the IELTS test, which gives her 10 points if she had a higher score, she could get up to 20 points. Simran has a master's degree in IT and a positive skills assessment. This earns her 15 points. She has 5 years of skilled work experience in her field, which gives her 10 points. Simran's partner meets age, English and skill criteria, which gives her 10 points. Meet Australian study requirements, so she does not get any points for it. She has not completed any credential language test. She gets no points for it. 
nomination for 190 will give her 5 points while nomination for 491 will give her 15 points let's add it all up simran will be able to get 75 points for 189 80 points for 190 and 90 points for 491 this puts simran in a competitive position for the general skill migration visas here are few tips for improving your points improve your english language skills higher ielts score can give you up to 20 points so target for the highest band requirement in your english test if possible gain more work experience as additional years of experience can add more points for example if you have 4 years of experience waiting another year to get additional 5 points can help your application look into state nomination options as this can provide extra 5 for sub class 190 or 15 for sub class 491 and may increase your chances that's a wrap up for today's case study i hope this breakdown helps you understand the points calculation process better thanks for watching and don't forget to like subscribe and hit the bell icon for more updates on immigration to various countries